Hello, everyone, and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe, and today we're going to be recapping Taylor Swift's shows in Zurich. We're also going to be talking about Travis Kelsey revealing how much he, I think it was he, or maybe Taylor Swift, spent on their Super Bowl suite this past year because that information was revealed this week. Um, but before we get into all of that, I do just want to say, I mentioned it a while ago, but if you haven't seen, we have launched a new sports YouTube channel called A Fast Break. I will try to link it here. here. I'll also try to link it, or I'll put it at the bottom of the description. It is a sports YouTube page. We are covering all all things in sports. We're also getting ready to do a big, big episode on the Olympics coming up. We're going to be covering the Olympics extensively, football season, all that good stuff. So if you are a sports fan, if you want to, um, I don't know, learn more about football and the Chiefs and Travis Kelsey when that season starts up again very soon, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Check us out. We would really, really appreciate it. Okay, let's get into the show, starting off with, of course, recapping Taylor's two consecutive nights in Zurich, Switzerland. Again, kind of interesting that she decided to perform in the middle of the week. I feel like we've said this before, things are changing around with the European dates um, because typically she would just perform on the weekends, but now she's performing on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and um, all that kind of stuff. I think probably part of it is because she she is playing certain cities only two times in a row, like Zurich. Um, so that gives her some flexibility in terms of being able to play during the uh, during the work week, I guess. Um, but let's get into the surprise songs that she did. So night one, she did Right Where You Left Me, mixed with a little bit of All You Had to Do Was Stay. Great songs. I really like Right Where You Left Me. That's probably one of my favorite bonus tracks she's put out. All You Had to Do Was Stay is a classic off of 1989. So very, very strong mashup there. And then of course, because it was July 9th, she performed a mashup of Last Kiss and Sad beautiful, tragic. And in fact, before she even started this, the song, she did say happy, happy July 9th to those who celebrate. If you don't know the, um, the, the date July 9th is featured in Taylor Swift's song last kiss. I actually, so I I've said this before on here. I went to see her perform in Kansas city a year ago on July 8th, the famous show that Travis Kelsey was at. And she performed Last Kiss at that show because the very next day was July 9th and she didn't have a show on on that day. So I got the honor of hearing Last Kiss live. Um, And I feel like the Swifty community really celebrates July 9th. It's one of our dates that we that we, that we choose to acknowledge in the Swifty community. Um, but that is a really, really good matchup. I love Last Kiss so much. I love so much of Speak Now so much. And I feel like, I've said this before on this show, it really makes me sad that Speak Now, especially right now in the Eras Tour set list, gets one song because I feel like that album is so strong and there's so many good songs I mean, Dear John, Mean, Sparks Fly, Long Live. Like, there's just so much good stuff on that album. And I wish, I just kind of wish there was a little bit more of it in the actual set list. Um, So, obviously, love that mashup. I think it's great. And one of Taylor Swift's best written songs, in my opinion, Last Kiss. Love it. Okay, then Night 2 she started off with um, a mashup of Closure and A Perfectly Good Heart. Now, I have to be honest about something. Closure, which is on Evermore, is one of my least favorite Taylor Swift songs ever. Maybe it's a controversial opinion. I'm not sure, but I I really don't like that song very much. So if I'm being perfectly honest, which I feel like I can be perfectly honest with you all here, um, I would have been pretty upset <laughs> to have heard that song. Not upset, but it would not be, it would be, like maybe one of the last songs on my list that I would want to hear her perform during the surprise song section. And then a perfectly good heart, which is off of her debut album is fine, but it's, it's not one of my favorites. And then she did a, uh, a mashup of Robin, which is on TTPD mixed with never grow up off of, um, speak now, right? Yeah. Speak now. Um, another great song. Gotta be honest, not the best surprise songs in my opinion. 
in my very, very personal opinion. I would have much rather attended night one Zurich than night two, but that's just me. Um, Roger Federer, tennis goat, my tennis goat, one of the best tennis players of all time, famous Swiss man, was in attendance in uh, Zurich for the very first night um, of Taylor's tour. He shared a selfie um, of his arm like covered in friendship bracelets. He also got a selfie with Taylor following the show. You know, Taylor, as we know from Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift does not meet very many people backstage. Um, she doesn't really see people after shows. Um, but this isn't the first time that Taylor has shown love to a tennis great. She also wrote Iga Swiatek, who is the women's number one, uh, won the French Open this year. She wrote her a note um, when she went to the Eras Tour congratulating her on her French Open victory. So it does seem to me like Taylor Swift is a tennis fan. I could be wrong about that, but it does seem like she... Um, she gives extra attention to some of these tennis greats, um, but I just love I just love Roger. Honestly, I'm not sure if he was there with his family or not. I didn't see. He probably was there with his kids. I didn't see his kids there, but if he went by himself, it's pretty iconic. But again, loved to see that. Um, Taylor obviously is now heading to Milan, Italy this week, which sounds like a lovely place to be. And now she'll be doing some Italian shows this weekend. Um, Travis is back in the States. He's back filming, um, his Ryan Murphy show this week. I think he also maybe has a golf tournament or something this weekend. So he's back stateside, no longer in Europe with um, Taylor. And honestly, I mean, in a few weeks, a couple of weeks, he's going to have to be back full, full time for Chiefs tr training camp. And they probably won't see each other for a good month, over a month or so. So I do kind of wonder if he's going to get back to Europe for one last little trip before then he has to officially be back in Kansas City. We'll have to wait and see, but we're going to go, we're going to be going quite the long time without any Taylor and Travis content. So we got to buckle up for that. Um, but we did find out, so I don't know if anyone has watched the new Netflix show Receiver, which is basically a spinoff of the Netflix show Quarterback that came out that featured Patrick Mahomes and some other quarterbacks. Um, now they're doing a receiver version of the show. And San Francisco tight end George Kittle is one of the featured re receivers on the show. And there was a clip from the show of Travis and George talking uh, during the Super Bowl week. And Travis was asking George if he had gotten a suite for his friends and family. And George was like, uh, no. And Travis was like, oh, is it because it's $3 million? And my jaw dropped when I saw that. I think we had heard reports that it was like a million dollars maybe, or that it was going to be very, very expensive for people to be able to afford a suite for the Super Bowl. But $3 million is insane. Now, I don't know how many people a suite fits. I don't know if I don't know. So are people splitting that amount? Perhaps. I think we did hear reports at the time that Travis paid for his suite for all of his friends and family and that it wasn't Taylor Swift. Obviously, Taylor Swift could afford a $3 million suite if she wanted to. Um, but that is a pretty penny. That is a pretty penny to spend. But you know what? For Travis, for Taylor, for everyone that went, it was worth it because they won and it was incredible. But imagine paying that much money and then you lose. <laughs> that would be rough. Very, very, very rough. Anyway, I was shocked to hear that number. But that's that for today's show. Not a whole lot going on in the world of Taylor Swift right now. But again, as we know, that can change very, very, very quickly. We will be covering, of course, her um, Milan shows and everything next week. If anything else crazy happens, we'll be getting into all of that. As always, leave your questions, your comments, your concerns. If you have any, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we will see you guys next time. Bye.